Why do I make so many videos dedicated to how I bother a 40-year-old man? A great question. A uh, simple answer, really. It's because it's the funniest thing ever. Lately, people have really been enjoying the videos that I've been making about my professor, but what you might not realize is that I have been making videos about this man since 2021. And if you're thinking, there's no way that an accredited professor is crazy enough to have inspired three years worth of content, let me tell you a story. A couple days before April 1st, my professor was telling me that he was scrolling through my comment section under the video I had made about him and reading all of the comments that were hitting on him to his wife and that his wife was quote unquote, getting a little jealous. Then on April Fool's Day, when him and I had a scheduled meeting with each other, he told me that he was planning to have me walk into his office to find him crying. Real, genuine tears. And when I would ask him what was wrong, he was going to tell me that his wife had asked him for a divorce because of everyone thirsting over him. He was going to let me believe that I had broken up his family with my TikTok comment section. And the only thing that stopped him from doing it was because a professor had walked in right after me. Mommy, why are you and Daddy getting a divorce? Well, sweetie, um, it's because at Yossified Jungkook 5627 kept commenting about how he wanted to stick his fingers in your father's mouth. Is Yasufai Jungkook going to be my new dad? <clears throat> uh, anyway. Enjoy all of the videos I've ever made about him in one nice compilation. Also say hi professor in the comments because he's definitely watching this. And maybe hit on his wife while you're down there too, you know? I want her to feel included. Today class, we're going to be talking about why we like the things we like. Can someone tell me something they like to do? Oh, um, I really like to read, like, happy queer romances. Thank you, that is a great example. Now, class, do you realize that you are more likely to like something, to really gravitate towards something, because you don't have it in your life? <laughs> I'm never coming back. I'm telling you right now, this kind of behavior is not going to fly with your professors in college. You could just never convince me to stop speaking if I wrote something that good. I'm gonna assume you did write it then, based on how you act in class. Guess who got their Adderall meds refilled? Nice. Thank you, thank you. Oh, I need to see the shirt. The shirt. Shakespeare wrote hard smut, he just didn't present it as hard smut. Shakespeare's a smut sl I'm gonna keep going before I accidentally out any of you as a furry. Why are you all still here? Don't you people have homes? It's as you said, a hoe never gets cold. Shut up, it is not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. <laughs> Thank you.
Yeah, no more feet for you people, you Tarantino freaks. I don't want anything on my eyeball that's been on your eyeball. We aren't dealing with witty repartee like an Oscar Wilde, okay? We're dealing with someone who has a bear trap clamped to their ass. Write that down. Bear trap ass. That's how you round yourself out. A handful of the great playwright Chekhov and a handful of pillow smut. I wish I loved anything as much as they loved reading. And I have a daughter. So bear with me because- Then get out of the room! There's a bear in there! You guys know I have the ability to go in and change grades from over a year ago, right? Yeah. So once again, who wrote this play? Shakespeare. Thank you. You're on new ADHD medication? Yeah. No, I can tell. It's working better this time. If you ever wondered how far I would take a joke that only I thought was funny, I'm happy to answer that question for you. Because a year ago, I had to read Twelfth Night for one of my theater classes, and the night before our class discussion, I looked up extensively how to make an opening statement in court, made this shirt, wore it to class with a suit on and pretended to be Malvolio's lawyer who was suing the other characters in the play for creating an unsafe work environment. And if you're wondering if I have video proof that I did that, yes, I do. Roll the clip. Your Honorable Judge, permission to approach the court. Oh my. Dude, I hate theater people. <laughs> this is a case about justice, is about that? perseverance, oh, okay. about the fundamental aspects of being an American. My client, they're not American. American. They're hilarious. Objection. They're Objection. Let me finish because I get Objection. to it. Now, is my client Malvolio a likable man? No. 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 That simply depends on the interpretation. <laughs> Are these malicious characters any better? Sir Andrew Agacheek, who is in an illicit, dumb sub-relationship with another man, withdrawn Maria, who <laughs> is You know Hannah Montana, right? Now I'm just saying, you've never seen me and Taylor Swift in the same room. We're your ride or die bitches. I'm looking at you, beta. I'm not gonna take that. Of course you won't, beta. Oh, oh, so when Kristen wants to run around, it's totally normal. But when I want to run around, it's, have you taken your Adderall today? Because when Kristen runs around, that's all she does. When you run around, you run around, and then you paint yourself green, and then you crawl under a bush for a TikTok video. I took my Adderall that day. Exactly. What color is the sky for you? Pop quiz. What was the first slash fic ever written? Oh, I know this one. I know. Oh, you're going to tell me and then I'm, I'm totally going to know what it is. I know. <sighs> okay, I know this isn't right, but Teen Wolf? No, it was Star Trek fan fiction shipping Kirk and Spock. Oh, I knew that one. You know, talking with you is like reading a postmodern drama. Rarely linear and hardly ever makes sense. So what I'm hearing from that is that your communication professor definitely thinks you run an OnlyFans now. I know. And I don't know why I made it sound so suspicious. Uh, breaking the fourth wall here, I don't. Okay, it's bad enough that my communication professor probably thinks it. I don't need you thinking that too. I mean, he looks like he's pushing 30. Wasn't the guy you made out with in London pushing 30? Uh, no, no. I didn't make out with that guy because he had the same name as my dad. I made out with the guy who looked like Tomska from 2016. Either way, it's not my proudest moment. You're telling me the Tomska guy wasn't pushing 30? No comment. What's with this mother and father thing I keep seeing? Like, mother is mothering so well. What is that about? 600 pages of Twilight in one day sounds like a clear violation of the Geneva Conventions. And I might just have to write to my senator about it.
I am not late turning in this assignment. I am not late turning in this assignment. I am not late turning in this assignment. Now that we got that out of the way and we all agree that I am submitting this project in a timely manner, let's talk about the boys from Syracuse. Feels great to have an audience that literally has to watch this whole video. I guess you don't have to. I guess you could give me an F if you really wanted to. But hear me out. Please don't. Let's get started. And Shakespeare's Comedy of Errors is actually a work inspired by The Brothers Menechmus by Plautus, which I don't have to explain to you, but I just did anyway. Hi, I'm a mansplainer. So what is The Boys from Syracuse about? I would love to tell you, and I'm going to tell you while reading it directly off of my computer, because this plot is convoluted, I don't know what to tell you. Humor and hijinks ensue when the twin master and servant from Syracuse end up in Forgot to look up how to say that name. Let's just look that up real quick. How to pronounce... Ephesus. 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 Because she believes that her husband doesn't love her anymore, but it's actually just not her husband. <laughs> that harp, by the way, nothing to do with the analysis. That harp is literally magical. I am not late turning in this assignment. I am not late turning in this assignment. I am not late turning in this assignment. That we got that out of the way and we all agree that I am submitting this project in a timely manner. Let's talk about the boys from Syracuse. Knowing you, you probably made a snide comment. So let's start talking about the people who wrote this musical. interested when I was analyzing this song about a concept that we had talked about in class because she believes that love has fallen out with her so she can only mourn for what she used to have some real emails that I've sent my college professor because everyone has been asking for more professor content. Week four response, not clickbait. Finally turned it in. You don't have to accept this. I know it's so late. Hey, what's up you guys? Today I'll be turning in an assignment to my professor that he should have gotten last week. This is some pretty dangerous stuff. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on those channel notifications. Leave a comment if you're a part of the academic gang. Fire emoji, 100 emoji. Metal. I'm really not feeling great and wanted to let you know that I won't be in class today. Feel free to mourn me in class as I feel like I was hit by a truck and died. I've titled this piece, I've been hiding the fact that my Adderall ran out this week. Alternate title is, the time it takes me to get my work done without my 10 milligrams is very long. I know, I know. Nobody noticed. It's not like I haven't been able to remember what I've been saying mid-sentence all week or anything. Getting my refill soon. He sent me this one when I turned in my uh, essay late. 508? Really? 508? Really? You couldn't hit a 5 o'clock deadline, so you turn it in 8 minutes late? Really? Uh, and then I hit back with the, I was taking a Brechtian approach to submitting my essay. By not submitting to the class's form of realism, submitting my essay before the 5 p.m. deadline, I'm calling attention to my use of critical thinking skills. I refuse to go with the herd and submit to a societal hive mindset. Basically, by submitting my essay eight minutes late, I'll never become a Nazi, and my performance art has been concluded. Bestest. <laughs> God, it's me. Please help me turn in my project to on time. My child, that is something beyond even my great ability. But I can give you this. ambiguous Christ-like figure on my side. 
Let's talk about Camelot. If I was JFK, I don't know if I'd want my wife going around saying how, oh, I was just like Arthur from the musical Camelot. Because, and I say this with all the love and respect in my heart, right? He was cuckolded so hard in this musical. So this story follows King Arthur and King Arthur falls in love with Guinevere. And then Guinevere's like, I love you too, but we can't do this. I can't betray Arthur, but it doesn't matter because when you fuck around, you find out. Mordred literally starts a war from this confusing love triangle and Camelot is toppled because nobody could keep it in their pants. But how strong could Camelot have been in the first place if the sheer horniness of every single character in this musical is what led to its downfall? And also, the most important part, Merlin does Jack in this musical! So why did I even pick it in the first place? In my opinion, Lancelot and Gwen can go at it. I mean, Arthur already has a man. What does he need them for? Who wrote this in my script? You. What are you doing? Um, uh, research. Oh yeah? Well, why don't you read some of that research out loud? You know, I'm sure our professor would love to hear it. Arthur and Merlin's tongues battle Stop! For stop! Just... Focus. I need you to focus. Because we need to get this done. And send that to me. When you're done with your research. Let's talk about Camelot. A musical I chose completely randomly and with no ulterior motives or internal bias at all. No ulterior motives at all. The cast is an absolute bombshell. I mean, with Colin Morgan as Merlin. If we're going by the legend of King Arthur and the whole reincarnation thing, definitely means that JFK could have been Arthur. And I guess that means that Jackie Kennedy is Merlin. I say this with all the love and respect in my heart, right? King Arthur is like so cucked in this musical. This story follows King Arthur and King Arthur falls in love with Guinevere. The Mordred, Arthur's evil son, senses the infidelity between these two. And then he's singing at her being like, oh, I love you, I love you, I love you, blah, blah, blah. So why am I doing my project on City of Angels? Oh, well, I have two answers for you. Uh, one of them is the truth, and the other one is a lie to protect my dignity. It's a show that has masterful usage of satire and comedy and skillfully makes a very biting and hilarious commentary on how Hollywood artists need to prioritize integrity. In eighth grade, I saw a song from this musical made into an angsty gay animatic on YouTube and it has genuinely stuck with me for seven years. In my defense, almost a decade later and it's still just as homoerotic. <laughs> The musical follows a novelist named Stein who is writing a screenplay about his popular detective character named Stone. And don't accuse him of projecting onto Stone because that one letter really makes all the difference. And before you ask, yes, this is the song from the gay animatic I watched on YouTube seven years ago. For my soul. That's a dick joke, ladies and gentlemen. Many actors play double roles as people from Stein's life show up in equally fitting parts for his detective story. I'm finally turning in my project on time this week. What's the catch? The catch? Why would there be a catch? I'm just turning it in on time. There's no catch. It was a quiet afternoon, almost too quiet for a city gone mad. So it wasn't much of a surprise when trouble rolled in. They strode into my office like a cobra, their eyes hollow. 
He had the fact that it was the end of the semester written all over him. Don't let the outward act fool you. This is the most lethal dame in the city. He took a seat. He was just the right age to pull off a plaid shirt and some khakis. You have some gall showing back up here, Professor. I saw his face twist. He didn't like that I knew exactly what he was here to collect. There's a hard deadline. April 30th, 11.59. Your time is up, Detective. I can't keep covering for you. Are you forgetting all the work you had me running around town doing for projects one and two? I was done walking on eggshells. You know how many favors I had to call in for all your little extensions? On my desk, by 11.59, or you won't like what happens. He stormed out, leaving a case file behind. I slammed back the rest of my coffee, and rain started to pour down like God himself was spinning on me. Well, let's get to work. Now the real question is, did I do that whole film noir-esque private detective intro because City of Angels is a comedy musical that follows a private detective? Or did I just want to call my professor a dame? Anyway. So, Jesus Christ Superstar. Uh, I think we talked about this a little in class. What? Why are you staring at me like that? Oh. Sorry, are you expecting something? Like, like some kind of bit? Just because I, I, I sometimes like add like little like jokes and like fun intro segments to my projects. I can't always be on, like I don't know what you want from me. Well, I guess we're just gonna both sit here disappointed then. Okay, hold on, I think I might have something. Okay, so I don't have a Jesus costume, but I do have this, which I feel like is technically close enough. It's a Santa suit, because Christmas is Jesus's birthday. Hey, I don't know, okay? I I'm working on a tight schedule here. Technically, isn't Santa like one degree away from Jesus? Have they met? I was tapping my foot, I was humming along, I was calling my local church to schedule a baptism. Do you get baptized in churches? I mean, if Jesus went on stage and went, Hi, I'm Jesus, I'm a carpenter, a uh, something something Jesus fact. Just like how when an artist decides to publish a song, once it's out there, it's not theirs anymore. They don't have control over how people decide to interpret it, to what people decide to say about it. I don't know if Jesus Christ Superstar really works if Jesus and Judas aren't in love. Maybe they should have just kissed. 